Hello, everyone, and welcome to another author interview here on the channel. I'm your host, Gabriel Garcia, otherwise known as the Wandering Quill and the Wandering Scribe. And today, I have a guest I am excited to share with you all here on the channel. My guest comes from a small village in the Netherlands. And since he was a little boy, he was always walking around with a lot of fantasy in his head. And one day, he decided that he had to do something with it. And that, of course, led to the creation of the Legacy of Swords. And to tell us all about that and more, let's give a huge round of applause. The first timer here on the channel, author Rick Seijben. Hopefully, I got your last name correct. Rick, well, thank you so much for coming on the show. Hello. Awesome. Awesome. Well, That's Rick, I'm excited. <laughs> All right. Well, Rick, I am super excited to have you on the show. Now, before we dive into your uh, book series, Legacy of Swords, um, is there anything else you would like to share about your background to the viewers and listeners? Well, uh, at the moment, I'm an elementary school teacher. Uh, I like to, to uh, uh, teach the kids uh, using fantasy, so using mm -hmm. their fantasy, so they get smarter by, by using their imagination. I like that. But I want to grow into a professional writer with my own uh, fantasy novel, and I hope it will succeed. Awesome, Rick. Awesome. So now let's dive into your upbringing. Now, in your bio, you've always had a lot of fantasy in your head growing up. Were you always a very creative person or did that come about later in life? Uh, no, since I was a little child, uh, when playing outside with my school friends, uh, I always made fancy stories that me and my friends could play out and and uh, then he was a king he was a knight and we we used sticks as swords as you <laughs> did as a child too maybe and, and we we played along and and when we got older the, uh, in the teenage years the the, the fancy stories were more of our age you know the, the story right and I was and maybe it was not always fancy but just a fancy about what we are going through that night when we go to the club or oh, we are going to do this all fantasy but you know not yeah more real, realistic fantasy you know what i mean ah yes like, definitely. oh we are going to the club tonight we were 16 and, so, <laughs> and now we are going to do this and this so like that so i always had that fantasy in me nice now regarding your uh series the legacy of swords how did that come about what was the aha moment for that well as i said i always had fantasy in my head and i um every time i watch a, a movie uh, mostly with fantasy movies i'm like oh i would do it like this and this and this and then i started reading books when i was 21 i started reading books uh, the first book uh, i ever started writing uh, reading as an adult are the uh, Song of Ice of Fire from uh, mm. George R. R. Martin. And I was uh, reading it. And later that day, I was like, maybe I can do this too. So I came back from work, picked up my old laptop from college, and started writing. Nice. And as a little teaser for our viewers and listeners, what can you tell us about the world of Legacy of Swords? Well, the Legacy of Swords has a, a big world, but in the first few books, we only are going to focus on the continent uh, called Arantia. Uh, and the, uh, Arantia is um, a one kingdom, it's a big continent, but it is one kingdom for 305 years now. Mm. And uh, it's ruled by the Amalores family, the House of Amalores. Uh, they were they were founded by brutes who just uh, claimed their right as kings. And uh, but in a dynasty that uh, survived for, for oh, 405 years old, 405. 
uh, uh, things can get a little bit rough. And one part of the continent uh, is getting um, uh, disrupted by all kinds of uh, crazy uh, mystical things that nobody can explain. Mm. But one day the king decides this part of the country is forbidden to enter. Nobody is allowed to come there. And everybody, all lords, are thinking, why do you don't want us to, uh, to go there? Uh, is it because there is magic you want to keep to yourself or giant gold mines right. you keep to yourself? What's the reason we can't go there? And the king won't explain. And that is some conflict that will build up in the first book. Fascinating. So now let's actually dive into the creation of the legacy of sorts. So when you began writing out the first draft, what were the goals you had in mind with this story, as well as the overall, um, what's the word I'm thinking of? Um, sort of like ideas or plans you had for like your perspective leaders. Like, what did you want them to take away from the legacy of sorts? Uh, what people can learn from it? Uh, yes. What do you hope for them to take away from well, Legacy of Swords? Uh, first of all, it's it's a story uh, about things that are happening in my head since I was a child. So you see stories that I got in my head like when I was nine. But uh, also I put uh, things in my story about the other side of, of war, you know, when you read a medieval story about war and all oh, the knights are fighting and it looks really right. cool, but then you read a chapter about a little child who just saw his mother get raped and murdered, and and you see his side of the story, a little kid of eight who has to survive without his parents from that moment on. Mm. And, and, and one chapter earlier, you were thinking, oh, this war is awesome, let's go fighting. And one chapter later, you were like, Whoa, shit, it's real, it's war. What the fuck is happening? Right. So it sounds like it's, as you said, it's like a realistic uh, fantasy story where it's like, it gives you one side, which is like the romance side of like the war, the fighting, but yeah. the other side you see from the peasants, the lower class, you see their perspective of the conflict and it's not all sunshines and rainbows. That is very much like a Song of Ice and Fire, a Game of Thrones, that it is very, very yeah. brutal. But that's really, really awesome, Rick. Thank you, thank you. You're welcome. So when you began writing out uh, the first draft and editing and editing, uh, what was sort of like the initial response from like friends and family who learned of this project that you were working on? Was it positive, negative, or mixed? Um, uh, all true positive, but uh, a lot of my, as I said, I come from a small village, so mm -hmm. a lot of my friends and family are like, not rednecks, but, but you know, the, the, the farmer like people do like, stay to your real job, be a teacher, a doctor, a farm, the, the real job. Right, know? right. And uh, But they were like, I <laughs> want to do it, try it, but... Uh, stay focused on your real job, you know? Ah, uh, so, yes. Like that. They were like, good for you. Good that you find a hobby. But for me, it's more than a hobby. It's like a passion. Yes. You want it to be like your full-time career down the road. Yes. Because right now, friends of mine are in a bar. And before I started writing, I would be there with them. But now I'm like, no, focus on my goals. You know, it's right. different for me now. All right. And from the in initial reaction from friends and family, did it in some way validate, like, your goals that you had with this uh, story, that you want to create a realistic fantasy but give it your own take? Uh, can you uh, repeat the question, please? Of course. So from the... Uh, response from friends and family, as you said, that it's good that you found, like, as I said, a hobby. Did it some way validate your goal 
with the story that you want to share it with other people? Yeah, yeah. Uh, some some of them read some parts. I sent some cha loose chapters to them. What do you think of this uh, for opinions? And they were like, wow, it's amazing. It's it's more than I expected. So that validates, like, see, I, I can do it. I can nice, do it. nice. Nice. Yeah. And now we're going to touch on uh, one of few uh, serious uh, questions. Um, and the first one is, well, I'll lead up to this one. As I'm sure you definitely will agree, Rick, writing a book, especially if it's like a passion project, is not easy. It's long hours of editing, long hours of revising, then finding a cover artist, finding an editor, finding all of that, which is very, very expensive. And then, of course, sharing it with the world, there's that level of anxiety which builds up in the sense that are people going to like this? Is it going to hit its mark? And that voice of imposter syndrome comes to tell you that this is not good. This is not what people are looking for. You just wasted five years of your life. So for you, Rick, have you ever had those moments of anxiety and imposter syndrome? And if so, what has continued to discipline you to write this series because in your heart this is a series that needs to be told and shared with others that's an amazing question uh, of course i, I had, uh, still have doubts sometimes uh, especially after i read a story like a writer like george r, r. martin i'm mm -hmm. like fuck this is so good this is so good <laughs> can i can I compete with this guy, you know? And, right. Uh, and then I open my and then I open my laptop and I read some uh, parts of my book and I think like, well, the story is good, but it needs some sauce, and then it right. will be better. And then uh, so I start working on that, and that gives me motivation for okay, maybe maybe my first book will not be on that level, but maybe the second one will be something higher. And I, and you need to learn during the way. Definitely. Emotion. Yeah. So that, that's something that keeps me alive to, to always keep learning, learning, learning every day. Excellent. And now this leads perfectly into what I call the business uh, portion of the interview, which is the business side of being an author. Now, Rick, I do uh, need to ask, uh, which is the lead up to this question. Is your uh, book series, Legacy of Swords, already published or is still in the process of being published it's um, i think even before that i'm still editing some uh, editing some things english is not my first language <laughs> uh and i'm rewriting some parts it's not final uh, i feel that some parts need to need more sauce ah uh, okay <laughs> So it's I'm not there yet, but uh, I'm thinking about it too. Um, okay. To... Okay. Well, then this actually leads perfectly to the first question. Now, for you, Rick, for this series that you are working on, do you feel that this book would work as an independent uh, story uh, for an independent author or... Would you want to try your hand once the book is finished and traditionally uh, publish the Legacy of Swords through like a uh, publishing house in Europe? Yeah, uh, I, when I first started writing um, two years ago, I was really Googling like how can you publish and what's smart, what's not smart. And I think because I have... Um, I know nothing about the business. I know nothing about the industry. I think for at least the first book, I go the tra traditional way because yeah, right. I can learn how it works and go to their office and, and see how they do. And maybe I can learn. I don't know. All right. That's completely fair. That's completely fair. And now the next uh, question of the business side is focusing on the audience. And the reason I bring this up is that when we write our books, 
we are the target audience. We know the story better than anyone else. But when we want to share it with other people, we really have to consider, okay, who is the audience that I'm writing for? Where does this book exactly belong in terms of genre? And does it hit its mark? Now, for you, Rick, and your book series, A Legacy of Sorts, do you kind of have an idea of who your audience is? And also, how important is it for an author to really understand who their audience is? That's an interesting question. I think uh, it's really important to know your audience, but I have to admit that I'm not 100% sure who is my audience. Uh, I, I have an Instagram account and on there, there are a lot of friends from your life, but mm -hmm. also some people who are interested in the project. Um, so yeah, I think people who like the genre, people who like a Song of Ice and Fire maybe, let that, because I, yeah, uh, I was inspired by that series. Um, so that that kind of audience, but precisely, I don't know yet. Okay, so generally speaking, it's for like fans of high fantasy, and for those who are fans of George R. R. Martin's work, they will enjoy a legacy of sorts, pretty much. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I don't have um, magical dragons or something, something like that, <laughs> but maybe. Yeah. All right, and going back to George. Um, Omar, as you said, that you were inspired by his work. And for us authors, we're always inspired by the titans of the industry who have really motivated uh, our work as authors in terms of like character development, prose, narrative style, world building, etc. But I also think it's important that we don't try to imitate these legends in the industry as one of my previous guests said and i'm sure you also agree with this uh rick i'm sure you've seen uh books that have had the tagline the next george r, r. martin the next stephen king or something along those lines and from a reader's perspective that's enticing because we already have an idea but from the author's perspective it's not really good because the reader is already going to get a preconceived notion of what to expect. And ultimately, as I said before, we're not trying to imitate other authors. We're not trying to be like um, this person or that person. We may be influenced or inspired, but we're not trying to imitate because ultimately we're all trying to show the world our voice and who we are as authors. So this is a long long question but ultimately uh rick um this is a two-parter what other authors would you say were greatly important in the creation or rather inspiration behind legacy of sorts and also how important is it for an author to really showcase their voice and not try to imitate other authors yeah, uh, let me first answer the, the second part. Okay. Because I think it's really important to be yourself, uh, not only in, uh, as a writer, but as a person. Uh, be yourself, do your own thing. Not. Uh, um, it, it would be crazy that if, in my story, a uh, 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 character gets three dragon eggs, and you know, it right. would be crazy. But uh, uh, keep, keep your own, as I said, as a child, I had my fantasy of, of playing with swords and, and keep keep that fantasy alive. Keep that fantasy and not try to, when you read something else, like, okay, this, sell, this, this book sells, let's take that. That's not, that's not cool. Take, right. take, take your own fantasy, take what, what you have in your own mind. Uh, to uh, your first, uh, as I said, I was inspired by George R. R. Martin. Well, really, my love for reading, it's not a fantasy, 
Nah, not, not a real fancy author, but it's a Dutch. I will Google it one moment because it's when I was a little kid. Uh, <laughs> it, it's called uh, uh, the, the the book is called the the Wilde Football Bande. In Dutch, it means the mm. Wild Football Gang, and it, it is about yeah, soccer in America. Soccer. Um, and uh, what's the writer's name? I can't, I can't, <laughs> but there was a book series, I think a 12 part book series about 12 boys who had a football club together. And it was, and they had a bully who come hit them. And, and it was for uh, the writer's name is Joachim Mazanek. Hmm. Uh, All right. Yeah, but I can't explain, but it was, it, it, it was about fo- soccer. But not really about soccer. It was they they had they had um, immense ba- battles with the uh, with the other fo- uh, soccer team, but not football. Oh, was, okay. You know, was, but I was a little kid and I found it so. But because you had there were twelve boys in the fo- in the soccer team, mm-hmm. and they had, had own they had all their own book. So you had the wild football gang uh, Fabian, the wild football gang Michael, and all. <laughs> their own book with their own POVs. And uh, uh, so it's, it was bigger than like in, in George's book, you have uh, one book with all kinds of POVs, but they have all their own book. And that is something I, I really found so awesome. Nice, nice. And that actually kind of leads perfectly, <coughs> sorry, to the third uh, question of the business portion, which is readership. Now, as I said before, the audience is important, but within the audience, you have the readership because the readers are going to tell you exactly what they think of the book. And also from the readership, we get an idea of exactly who is reading this book because we can market to, let's say, the fantasy uh, genre, But within the fantasy genre, who exactly is reading this? Is this young adults? Are these new adults? Are these adults? Et cetera. And sometimes the readership, in my opinion, is a little bit challenging because I'm sure you definitely agree, Rick, there have been some books that have been marketed to one particular audience, but upon reading it, you realize, eh, this needed a second revision because it's kind of on the new adult and adult uh, fiction side. And in some cases, there are books that are in the middle for both young adults and new adults, almost like a transition where they can just bounce into the next book or the next genre. So for you, Rick, and for the legacy of sorts, where do you find it belongs in terms of like this uh, readership. Is it in the middle for young adults and new adults to enjoy, or is it more towards the new adult and adult side? Yeah, I think somewhere in the middle. I'm 24 years old myself, uh, but I think there are a lot of horrific uh, stuff happening. So let's say at least uh, 16 uh, years older, at least. Mm, okay. But um, I, I don't know. I think in the middle, yeah, maybe. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. I haven't and thought I, a lot about that. I have to be honest. That's completely fine. And ultimately that can change, you know, with the process of writing and rewriting because – some books that we've read, um, you know, that have already been published, they didn't always start off like that in the beginning. They've gone through changes and changes, and ultimately that is important. Now, the next uh, question is another big one. So I'm going to give a lot of context to this question, and it's probably the most important one, and that is this. For first-time authors... You know, we all want to get our name out there. We want to show the world who we are. And 
uh, by doing this podcast for now two years, I've learned that there are two paths for authors. The first path is to be an author, and that's an individual solely dedicated to the art of storytelling, where capital is not really important. It's necessary. Well, rather, it's not the driving force, but it's nice to earn some capital. And then the second path is to be known as an author. And that is an individual dedicated to the art of marketing, showcasing their book, talking about it, promoting it on every social media platform. Now, each path has its own trials, hurdles, and obstacles. But I definitely feel for first-time authors, the enticement of the second path really gets to them because they believe that this book is amazing. It's going to get their name out there. It's going to get them to award-winning status. And I will say this, there are exceptions to that. There are authors whose first work have allowed them to reach that status. And that is a huge accomplishment. However, majority-wise, in this industry, there is no guarantee that one's debut novel is going to be the start of their legacy. It's a hard truth to swallow, but it is important. So for you, Rick, in your opinion, how important is it for first authors to really understand this concept that in this industry, there is no guarantee that their debut novel is going to be the start of their legacy, but it should not deter them from writing and creating stories if that is truly what they want to do. <clears throat> well, I agree with you. You, uh, of course, um, you want the best of both worlds. You know, you want right. You, you want to follow your dreams and, 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 and make it big. But the the first that is the most important one. You need to to create your fantasy and make it feel real. But, right. Uh, I think it's never wrong to to uh, try to achieve the highest. Right. Know? Um, but uh, to never if your first book doesn't sell out it's no problem you know keep mm -hmm. fighting keep fighting you get knocked down stand up keep fighting you uh, make a second one a third one a, four, a fourth one until you and I don't mean like until you made it I wanted to say that but I mean um yeah, to until you make, can make a living of it. Just, just, you want you want to do this, and if you don't make a living of it, it's fine. If you can um, release your fantasy into the world and share it with people who like it, that's the most beautiful thing there is in my head. Absolutely, one hundred percent. And to add on uh, to that, as you said, you know, continue writing. Like it may be your tenth book, fifteenth book or 20th book that people will really most know you for. And when that happens, you can tell them, hey, if you've enjoyed this book, check out my other ones. And boom, you have new fans, you have a new audience, and ultimately, you'll grow as an author because as authors, we're always constantly updating our craft. We're constantly changing our writing styles. We're constantly going into different genres to see, you know, as a challenge for us, what else can we write? And also, ultimately, to wrap this up in a nice little bow, grit transforms into talent. Because if you keep pushing, if you keep dedicating yourself to the craft, you're only going to get better. And even beyond the writing aspect, the networking aspect of being an author is huge, especially for first-time authors and independent authors. And especially on social media, there's so many other authors who are out there showcasing their work, networking with other authors, helping them, showing them the ropes. So for you, Rick, 
Are there any authors you would like to give a shout out to who have helped you understand the business uh, since you started this journey? Well, uh, I didn't um, uh, reach out to a lot of authors because um, I, I'm busy with a lot of things, but I think right. uh, you, you mm -hmm. for all the most, because you reached out to me, and I was like, well, this is a way to promote and, and, and get into the community and something like that. So when you reach out, I was on vacation. I was like, yeah, this is, this is, this is good. Let's react to this guy. And now we are here. Mm -hmm. And I think that I really, uh, that, and I start for, uh, searching to your page and seeing like it, this guy gets it. This guy gets what it's all about. And so I, I think my answer is you. Well, thank you, Rick. I greatly, greatly appreciate that. And we're almost near the end of this incredible author's interview. So the uh, next question um, is more of like a general question, but it's a nice little one. So besides, of course, friends and family, are there any other people in your life you'd like to give a shout out to who have really helped you as an author and as a person in general? As a person, uh, as an author, well, I, I don't know. In my neighborhood, there are no, uh, no other authors that I, I, I know. Uh, but I think uh, uh, who I always got support from are my friends and uh, family, of course, but my family is a lot like nice hobby, but keep your job. <laughs> right. And I have, and I, yeah, and I've, so I get them, and they are my parents. I get it. But uh, I have some friends who are really like, you're going to make it, you are going to be big. We know it. And I want to shout out to them. It's like Sandra Daniels and, and, and Harma Schilder and, 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 and uh, Robin Boats, uh, uh, all the all the guys I can name I can name them all. There are a lot, <laughs> and they really support me, and they really think I can make it big. So I like that. Awesome, awesome, Rick. And the next question, which is another important one, and this is more of a reflective question. And here's this: How different would your life be? If you did not bring about the legacy of sorts, it was, and if it was still an idea in your head, and it was like, oh, this is a nice idea, and poof, it was gone. Uh, well, I think I would be at the bar right now drinking beer, first of all. <laughs> and I would, I would be unhappy with my job because it's not, I, I mean, I like teaching, but it's not the job that I want. I want to end ah. with, uh, you know, uh, so I would be not proud of myself, but enjoying the moment with a beer, but that, that would be all, enjoying the moment and not the future, you get it? Right. Like I would be happy chilling with my friends, but when I wake up the next day, it will be like another day of work, you know? Mm, I see. And now, I've, now I feel like I have a goal. No, I like that. Nice. Nice, Rick. And now we arrived at the final question of this amazing author's interview. And here it is. So with everything you've learned and still learning about the industry, about being an author and crafting your brand as an author, what is your word of wisdom to other authors watching and listening to this interview right now? My advice, uh, keep fighting uh, and not with a bear, but with your mind. If you think like this is not going anywhere, let's uh, delete this file and, and, and go to a bar or do whatever you want to do. No, no, stay, write it, make it. Follow your dreams. And not only with writers, but with singers and with dancers and with every, all the talented people in the world, uh, actors who are like, mm, I can act, but no, no, 
follow your dreams, go to auditions, do something. Come on, man. Make it the best of your life. Awesome. Perfectly said, Rick. Excellently pointed out and a fantastic way to end this amazing author interview. Thank you all so much for joining us for another author interview here on the channel. I want to thank our guest today, Rick, for coming on the show and telling us all about his journey as an author and the Legacy of Sword series. Rick, thank you so very, very much. Where can thank people you find it? You're welcome. Where can people find and engage with you on social media to stay up to date with the Legacy of Swords? Well, on Facebook and on Instagram, you can find me on the Legacy of Swords, but in one word. Uh, and for my personal Instagram is uh, Rick Layer Line Seiben. If you want to follow me there, it's fine. Uh, I think that's all for the moment. Or, and there is a website coming, but it's not done. But that will be the LegacyOfSwords.com. But it's not finished yet. All right. I will link all those down below in the description of this video. Again, a huge thank you to Rick for coming on the show and telling us all about the Legacy of Swords. I cannot wait for when it is eventually released and I can add it to my collection and give my full review on it. I cannot wait for that. And again, viewers and listeners, Thank you all so very much for joining us for another author interview. And before we end, I do want to make another announcement. The uh, pre-order of Michael Latt's Angel of Earth is almost uh, up. It will be released next week on Monday the 2nd. So if you would like to get your hands on this custom print cover, all you have to do it's go to my Instagram or YouTube or the link at the bottom of this video to pre-order a copy of Michael. Once you pre-ordered a copy, message me on Instagram with proof of purchase and I will send you this custom print cover of Michael Last Angel to your email. And if you want me to e-sign it, I'll be more than happy to do so. So I will link it down below. In the description of this video or as i said before you can go to my instagram or bio page here on youtube thank you all so very much again thank you to rick for coming on the show and as always make sure to like and subscribe and comment down below what was your favorite part of the interview and as always this has been the wandering scribe and the wandering quill signing out and we will see you all in the next episode